All right, here you go. Splitting pattern. You got this now, right? See how often I'm doing the board. I write it on the board all the time. Healer, are you throwing me out? Oh my god. Okay. How'd we do? How many neighbors do those CH3s have? Neighboring carbons with hydrogens attached. Zero, right? So what's it going to be? Singlet. Okay, I want to make the, there we go, the line skinnier. <laughs> Break it out a little. Funny. No, it's thing one, okay? All right, how about this one? How about this one? Yeah, we're doing it. Because I'm like that. Somebody, I think there's 13. Is okay, there we go. Oh, multiple answers again. Okay, so these are the protons we're looking at. How many neighboring carbons have protons on? This one, just one, and how many? Two. Two. Two plus one is? So it should be a triplet. Okay? Now I'm going to ask you some other questions about that one. I want you to tell me which, he, let's do all the splitting, so why don't we? Okay? What is this one? Those are going to be a, a triplet. What about this one? The quartet, it has three on the neighboring carbon. Okay, what about this one? Triplet. Okay, and we had already done this one and these. Okay, now, which peak will be the farthest downfield? <coughs> Which peak will be the farthest downfield? Yes, the quartet of the CH2 will be the farthest downfield. I'm gonna write DF for downfield, how's that? Okay, that's important to know because what if the structure, was this. Okay. See how like we change it? All we have is O is on the other side. Now which peak will be the farthest downfield? This one. So that's how you can tell where the O is. By the one that's the furthest downfield. So if you have an ester, that's the trickiest part usually. It's figuring out where the O goes. Okay? Okay. 
Benzene protons have a complex splitting pattern, okay? And I've already showed you how they can uh, look messy a little bit. Okay, we're going to see more of that. There are some recognizable patterns, however. Okay, so here is uh, a benzene ring. And if you put two things on it, this was, if you're opposite each other on a benzene ring, what was that called? Uh, my, we forgot. Okay, para. Okay. How many kinds of protons are on that benzene? You notice that there are only, here, let me get another color. These two are the same, right? You see the symmetry through there? Okay, and these two hydrogens are the same. So there's only two kinds of protons. Okay, you get what we refer to as a doublet of doublet, and the distance between the doublets can vary. Okay, so let me uh, show you some that will actually help. Okay, so here's one. This is. Um, Paranitrotoluene is what it's called. Don't worry about the naming yet. But you'll see here's one kind and here's another kind of proton. And then you have your little methyl, okay? So there's only three kinds of protons in that whole thing. And look at this area. This is your benzene area, okay? And you have a doublet over here and a doublet over here. And it's just kind of, and they kind of have that little distance between them in here, okay? That's characteristic of para substitution. So when you see that, not only will you say benzene, but you'll say para, okay? What do you think the um, number of protons is for this one? And for this one, it's kind of covered up by these expansions. What do you think those are? They're each two. Okay, what do you think this one is? Three hydrogens, okay? Notice the shift of the CH3 that's attached to the benzene, okay? And notice we don't see anything for the nitro, do we? Because there aren't any hydrogens. You're only going to see hydrogens, okay? Okay, here is... Nitrobenzene, okay, without uh, another group on it. Okay, so notice how many benzene protons we have one, two, three kinds, and there are five hydrogens total. Okay, as you change what is attached to the benzene ring, you change how different those things are, those hydrogens are on the benzene ring. So you notice that in nitrobenzene, we actually get um, three kinds of protons, okay? The splitting still can be pretty complex, okay? The splitting still can be pretty complex. Which ones do you think are these ones that are the farthest downfield? Which ones would you pick? C, the ones that are the closest to the nitro group, okay? That makes sense, all right? So, and you'll notice it's a doublet, and then it just gets weirder from there. They're kind of weird triplets. These are then blown up, okay? So even though sometimes we'll see all of the hydrogens in one area, like right around seven, Sometimes they do get spread out. That's a clue that there's something on the ring that's real different. A nitro, a halogen, carbonyl, all those will help make them more different. Something that is electronegative is going to affect them, okay? But a plain old methyl will not affect them. This will probably only have two peaks, a peak for the methyl and a peak for the benzene, just like that ethyl benzene did that I showed Okay, so complex splitting patterns occur when the protons are split by neighbors of different kinds. Doublet of doublets is the most common one. Um, there is unequal coupling to vicinal pro protons. 
So what is a bisonal proton? One, a bisonal proton is a double bond, covered in a double bond. So here, we're gonna look at uh, a styrene. This is metanitrostyrene. Okay, don't worry about the name. Do you see that this pink one is coupled to the blue one and the green one? Okay, because they're both neighboring protons, but they're not identical, are they? Remember, you can't rotate around a double bond. So those hydrogens are different. And look what it looks like, it's just bizarre, okay? It kind of looks like a quartet. It doesn't look like a triplet, which is what you might have expected because two plus one is three. Last time I checked. But it um, instead, they're split by different J values. Remember what a J value is? The distance between the in the splitting. That, this little distance is the J value. Okay? So you can see some weird splitting um, based on this, okay? So just keep that in mind. I'm not gonna like go hyper on it or something, maybe an extra, okay? This is plain styrene and plain styrene does the same thing. When you have the nitro, it's a little, they're just spread out a little differently. And here is HA, that's this peak. Okay, here's HV and here's HC. Okay. Okie dokie. So B and C, I, I don't know that I could have figured out which one was B and which was C. I guess I might have put this one as B, this one here, because it was closer to the benzene, because it's on the same side as that benzene. So I might have thought, well, maybe that'll affect it a little bit because they're not at the same spot, okay? They're down a little bit. But this one is obviously A because it's split by two neighbors, which is making it look weird like that. That's that doublet of doubles, okay? And you're not getting a nice normal triplet. Um, this is another one that is just iotopropane, okay? And what we're worrying about is the one in the middle. Okay, so A has two neighbors, it's, it's triplet. C has two neighbors, it's a triplet, okay? Which one do you think is which? Well, this is farther downfield than this one, so this one is by the iodine, okay? Kind of what you expect. B, when you look at it, it has five neighbors, so you should get six, right? Five plus one is six, we did that. Okay, do you see how they're not nice and pretty? They have those little extra sides to them. That's because they're different colors, okay? But if you count it out, you should still get one, two, three, four, five, six. You still get six, okay? So you should be able to figure it out if there's a blow up and it's showing you that, that could be because they're different kinds, just to make sure you realize that you can. Okay. See, that's what they mean by imperfect. Or what I meant, I guess. They're similar, but not the same. Okay, what if you're an aldehyde, okay? Remember that an aldehyde is a carbonyl and your hydrogen is, this is the one we're worrying about, that one. That hydrogen comes around nine to 10, okay? You can see coupling between protons on neighboring carbons, but is often very small and difficult to see, okay? So look at this one, okay? Oh, how come that's in there right there? What did I do? That maybe that was an ending slide one semester and I put it there. All right, so figure out which one will be farther downfield. You only have two choices. <clears throat> this is called the question to help your grade. Mess me up in my little train of thought. I didn't skip a slide, did I? 
by accident. Did I hit it twice? Okay. All right, we're there. And we all got it right. Yay! Why? Because this one is right next to the O. Okay, the CH3s are two carbons away from a carbonyl, but an O shifts farther down. Okay. What is the splitting pattern of the indicated protons? I must have ended at that spot one year. Oh, my bad. Thanks for not letting me take another time. Okay, while you're doing this, so how did Lab go with the IR? Okay, so um, I was hoping to finish NMR. Today's Friday, though. Next week is our test. So, um, and, and talk about mass spec and IR. So I think I'm just going to do it after the test. So it won't be on this test. Okay, it'll be on the third test. And I'm going to talk about mass spec, and I'm going to go a little bit over IR, but I can't spend days on it. I'm supposed to do it in the lab. That's how we do it. Okay? So hopefully, what he told you, what I tell you, will be it. IR is very different from this, agree? For one thing, the hardest part of IR is to get used to it, and the next hardest part is to not try to come up with something for every single one. That's the hardest part. You have to realize which peaks are important. Okay, and what does that take? So be looking at IR. Okay, we're all there. We all got it. Yay. This was almost like a different one. All right, that's okay. Okay, so here's two methyl propanal. Okay, don't worry about the nomenclature. Just look at the structure. Notice that we have one, two, three kinds of protons. Okay, here's our spectrum. We have one, two, three kinds of protons. We have three kinds, three peaks. What is this? Okay, that peak is from the chloroform. When you get your deuterochloroform, it's 99.8% D. Okay, what is the other 0.2%? The hydrogen one. Okay, and that's right at 7.3. That's a number you should learn, just so you keep it straight. Okay, so sometimes it gets labeled, but if you're running the spectra yourself, it's not going to be labeled for from you have to know that that's cool. Okay, and it should be small compared to your other peaks. It should have, if you have a really dilute sample, though, it can be bigger. Okay, make sense? The more you put in, the more bigger your peaks will be. The ratios will always be the same between the peaks in for your compound. Okay, so you see this peak way out here. It's 9 point, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine point seven five maybe. Okay. And our NMR will tell you where they are. Okay. Now, when you look at it, does it look like a singlet or a doublet down? It looks like a singlet, doesn't it? This is your blow up, okay? This is part of the reason why we do them, because you can stretch it out and you can see it a little better. Do you see that now it looks more like a doublet? Because how many neighbors does it have? It has one neighbor. Okay, now when you look at the one hydrogen, the little, the little pink one, he's got how many neighbors? He's got these six plus this one. But are they going to split it identically? No, because they're going to have different coupling constants because they're different kinds. So you'll notice when you look at this, you can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> You're only getting seven. Where is the aldehyde proton splitting? Do you see how these are not nice? They're kind of wide and maybe funny looking at the top. 
okay? So just realize that this coupling to this is gonna be even harder to see than the other way around, okay? So don't let that, don't, don't not draw that structure when you clearly know that these two methyls have how many neighbors? One neighbor, right? Because it's a doublet, okay? And then of course you'd also have your, um, integrations in there. This doesn't have them. Okay. Any concerns on that? Did we not just do this? No, we're not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> we already got it. Okay, alcohols. Alcohols have OHs. Okay. That's a proton. You can see that proton in the NMR, but it's not a tag. Remember that the range was like one to four, like, oh, gee, thanks, okay? The OH of a primary alcohol is usually not split by the CH2. So for example, if you have ethanol, okay, this hydrogen has, has neighbors, doesn't it? Okay, but that hydrogen is available for hydrogen bonds. So what will happen is it will exchange with hydrogen of other molecules, okay, which thus decouples it from the other protons in the molecule. So if you run that ethanol, you'll see a peak for the CH2 and a peak for the CH3 and a peak for the OH. But only the CH2 and the CH3 will split each other. The OH typically does not, okay? If you dilute the solution a whole lot or cool it way down, and some NMRs, can, you can actually change the temperature and do temperature studies. We can't do that on ours. Um, you uh, can see the splitting. Okay, and I'm going to show you some NMRs that have it, right? Isn't that the next one? Okay, right here I have D2O exchange experiment. So what is D2O? Deuterium, okay? It's heavy water. Okay, it's using heavy hydrogen to make water, okay? So what you would do is you would have your compound dissolved in your deuterofluoroform with your TMS in your little NMR2. Okay, and here's your little cap. There's a cap on there, okay? And uh, it's not quite that pointy, but such is life. Okay, so here's my stuff in there. Then what I would do is I would go run my spectrum. Then I would add a drop of D2O, just one drop, and shake it up, okay? Then I'm gonna let it separate. Does anybody know the density of chloroform? Have you used chloroform in lab? It is denser than water. So what will happen is the D2O will react with the alcohols, okay? And look what you get, R-O-D, rod. Okay, so what does that do to the OH peak? When you take the H and replace it with the D, the OH peak goes away. Okay, you'll have like, you'll be able to see a little layer up there. Okay, just like if it was in your set funnel, because chloroform and water don't mix. But when you shake it up, it's going to allow, it's going to mix enough that the deuteriums are going to exchange with the hydrogen, but only the ones unexchangeable protons, okay? So that will be those that are available for hydrogen bonding, OH and NH, and you can do SHs, even though I've never done them. You know, I did sulfur stuff, okay? So what will happen is that peak will go away. So if you have a complex alcohol and you're trying to figure out, is that the OH? I don't know. You can add, drop it to O, shake it up and rerun the spectrum. If that peak is gone, what do you know? It was the OH, okay? So it's like a little trick that you can do. All right, so up here is pure ethanol. Um, here we have ethanol with a trace amount of acid. So this pure ethanol up here isn't even in a solvent, okay? They just put a little bit of TMS in there, okay? And so you do see the coupling between the OH. Okay, then they added a drop of acid and they re-ran it. And here is the OH now. Okay, it's not coupling with the other ones. 
okay, because it's being allowed to exchange. That help. This is what you would see normally would be the bottom. Okay, this is going to be normal. Alcohol. Okay, that would be a normal one. This would be real unique. Okay, that you could see the OH splitting. So what you should do is plan that you're not going to see the splitting from the OH and don't count it when you're figuring it out. Okay, the nitrogen hydrogens are typically broadened um, and they can couple but slightly and you can do exchange experiments with them. The um, NH, it helps if you just have spectra. Oops, go. Oh, I don't have a spectra. Okay, so um, one of the things that I've done is I've worked with amino acids, okay? And so I would have something like this. I'm just gonna draw a real simple one. <coughs> Believe it or not, this is a real simple one. Okay. How many kinds of hydrogens are in that molecule? Did you get it written down yet? Might take 10 minutes. Huh? Okay, we got one, right? We got two. We got three. Is this NH different than this NH? Yeah, this one's by a carbonyl and an O. This is only by a carbonyl. They're different. You're going to get one for that one. What about the CH2? Is it different from the CH2? Yep. What's the amino acid that has CH2? Glycine. Okay. And this one. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six kinds of hydrogens. Okay. When I run the spectra, the NH stand out because they are going to look like this. Okay, they're typically broader, and you do see a little bit of coupling between them. So this guy has two neighbors. So it looks like a triplet. I call it a broad triplet. That's what I would call it in my thesis. A broad triplet. Okay, you can have broad doublets, and you can have broad triplets. Okay, now what about the CH2? The CH2s have one neighbor, you are going to see doublets for them. So it's real obvious which ones are the CH2s. So in case you thought the whole thing was just gonna have four singlets, this will be a big singlet, huge, okay, nine hydrogens, and then your integrations will also help you because these two will be two hydrogens and this one's gonna be three, okay? The two CH2s are a little farther downfield than the OCH3 class. You could figure that out when you're looking at the spectrum, but if you had to guess, you might not have necessarily guess that because, um, but it's affected by the carbonyl and the NH. Okay, so typically you'll see NH as they'll be a little broader. So if you have one that has just one hydrogen next to it, it usually looks kind of like that. It's kind of weird. And I'm probably making them bigger. I mean, you figure, you know. But it's obviously broader than a regular peak that is just like this. Those are pretty tight, okay? I thought I had one, and maybe it's... Okay, now, a couple of things you need to know before you start doing unknowns, which is where we're working towards. Hydrogens that when one... Did I skip it? Yeah, this is what I wanted to tell you. Okay. <coughs> Identical hydrogens do not split each other. So if you have this compound, which is called cyclopentane, little nomenclature you there. Okay. Even though you look at that and go, oh, well, everybody's got four neighbors. We should get a nice, pretty pentat. No. 
if you are the same kind of hydrogen, you do not split each other. So you're only going to get one peak, and it's going to be a single. Now, when you look at this one, this is THF, tetrahydrofuran. We used it, we talked about it being a solvent. Okay, so do you see your plane of symmetry through here? Okay, so we have this kind and this kind. Well, this one has two neighbors. He's a triplet. We are quite happy with that. Okay, now look at the bottom one. That one has four neighbors, but one of them is the same kind. So these protons are going to be flipping when these guys are flipping. They're busy flipping, so they don't couple. Okay, so what happens is you get two triplets from that compound. Okay, this carbon over here, either one, this one or this one, are called prochiral carbons. What that means is it will become chiral if one of the hydrogens is replaced with another group. Here's an example. Do you see that this is now chiral? Okay, because of that, sometimes you see prochiral hydrogens as different in the NMR. Okay, now in our NMR, I don't think you would because we have only a 90 megahertz. But if you did a 400 megahertz or you wanted to see them, you could see them. Okay, I, uh, since I work with amino acids, you all know that there are amino acids that are chiral, right? Did you learn about DNL? Remember, we talked about that little teeny bit last semester. Okay, um, those two, I had to, I worked with a reagent that would take the peptide bond, the oxygen, and replace it with the salt. So when I did that, I wanted to show that my CHs in my chiral centers did not get messed up. They stayed, okay, that's real important because you don't want to do something that you worked really hard to get all those chiral centers and then use that reagent and it messes up your chiral centers. Okay, so anyway, I did a study and I actually set my stuff away for 600 megahertz to um, Albuquerque. And they got them for me and sent them back, the uh, spectra. And um, what we found out was that it didn't mess them up, but I had to prove it that they were still there, still in the correct space. Okay, we didn't get them messed up. So I had to make like all the possibilities and find all the specific shifts for the CH that was the chiral hydrogen, <coughs> was how you do that. Okay, and antiotopic hydrogens, when one hydrogen is replaced with another group, the carbon becomes chiral and forms an antimer. They are typically chemically equivalent, so you see one NMR signal. So here we have uh, pro-R and pro-S, okay? So these two hydrogens on ethanol, okay? They look like we've been seeing them, okay? Diastereotopic hydrogens are carbons bonded to two hydrogens in an asymmetric center. So that's these two. Those two are not chemically equivalent ever, okay? Because one is by the bromine and one isn't. Okay, so you see that? Because this is a chiral center. Okay, so if you replaced A or B, one of those hydrogens, with something else, here we just put a deuterium on there, you get two diastereomers. Okay, so because of that, you will get a different chemical shift for those protons every time. Wow. We're skipping. Maybe we'll do them at that. All right, so here is a compound that has um, a carboxylic acid. Do you, what do you remember about these guys? Hmm, they're way downfield. So here it is. Okay, it's usually 12 to 14. It didn't like my two. Okay, usually they're pretty broad and you don't see any splitting with them. I mean, it doesn't have any next to it. But uh, I don't know why it's showing up some splitting in this one. We're not going to worry about it. 
All right, so these guys are the same. Do you see the symmetry in the molecule? These guys are the same, and this one is different. I'll put a star by that one. Okay. So what do you think is at 9.8? What does it say? Oh, that's the integration value. I'm like, what is that? Okay, this is the um, ones that are by the carbonyl. So notice that having the two hydrogens on the carbons of the benzene ring near a carbonyl shifts them down a little bit. Okay. The pink one is, the, is in the air, aromatic region and it's the one that's the farther upfield. So notice this is two hydrogens, this is one hydrogen, this is one hydrogen, and this one is six hydrogens. Okay, this isn't a very good spectrum. This is not printed very well. I bet I got it off a website. Okay, look at this compound. This compound has two carboxylic acids on. Okay, so here's our D. They're here. Okay, when you, if you were trying to figure out if this one had one carboxylic acid or two in it, what would be some clues? Well, first of all, I'm going to write up here the formula for that. C5H. Oops. My bad. Okay. So what would be a reason that it might have two carboxylic acids? How many oxygens are there? Use the formula as a... Okay. And when you figure this out, you should... This is really blurry up here. Is it on your printout? Oh, I don't know. This would be two hydrogens when you figured it out, okay? The integration, okay? Notice that C is pretty far downfield. That's the C one, okay? B is this one, and A is this one. Yeah, that didn't come out very good. I bet I got that off a website too, and I'm sorry. All right, so here is um, an unknown, C4HAO2. Do we have this one? Okay, well, that's all right, we're gonna do it. You can look up here. This one, at least you can read. Okay, so uh, over here, we have one hydrogen, okay? Here we have two hydrogens, here we have two hydrogens, and here we have three hydrogens. So what, um, what can you tell me? Can you tell me anything about the splitting? Okay, go, let's go down here. How, how many kinds of hydrogen, how many kinds of hydrogen are in the whole thing? Four, everybody get four? Okay, so when you draw your structure, it should have four kinds. Okay, can you tell what the splitting is for this? It's a triplet. What does that tell you? It has how many neighbors? Two. So I'm gonna write 2N for neighbors. Okay, what about this one? Hmm? Multiplet, right? Okay, what about this one? Triplet, how many neighbors? Two, so this one's gonna have a lot of neighbors. Okay, you might not be able to tell exactly how many. Okay, but you can tell is a lot of Okay. So we have C4H8O2. This is above 10. So what does that tell you? You'll notice that there isn't a little peak in there, is there? But it's still integrated it. It's so spread out that it's flat. Okay? But if it's there, it will integrate it. Okay? It's unusual that you wouldn't see it really. All right. So how um what does it mean if it's over 10? Aldehyde. No. Uh, 10 to 14 is carboxylic acid. Okay. What? Did I mess up? No, I was about to mess up. No. Oh, okay, okay. Aldehyde is 9 to 10. Aldehyde is 9 to 10. So write that down. 
Okay, and do we have enough oxygens to do a carboxylic acid? We do, don't we? Okay, we only have four carbons. So I'm gonna draw this piece. <coughs> it's just a piece of a structure. You don't look at this and go, I'm writing down the whole thing, boom, 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 boom. Okay, I can do that. But I've looked at a couple more than y'all have, just a couple. All right, so what have I used out of my formula? I used a C, I used one H, and I used two O's, right? What do I have left? Three C's, seven H's, and no O's. Okay, here's what I got left to come up with C3H7. All right, so how am I going to do that? Well, I've got a carbon. It's got to be have two hydrogens on it. How many neighbors? You said two neighbors. I've got another carbon with two hydrogens on and more than two neighbors. And then I've got a CH3 because it's three hydrogens. Okay, and it has how many neighbors? Two. So what structural piece will make those? If you don't know, just write something down and look at it. That's a good way to do it too. So if I write CH2, CH2, CH3, does that match? The splitting. Okay. This has two neighbors, it's a triplet. The CH3 has two neighbors, it's a triplet. The CH2 in the middle has how many neighbors? Five, so it should be six. Okay, now, those are my two pieces. I used up all my carbons and hydrogens, right? So put it together, what's the whole structure? Okay, does that fit with the ships? Who should be the father's down field? Looking at your structure that you drew up here, who should be the father's down field? This one, is that the one you think it is? Okay, that makes sense. And then this one, and who should be father's up field? The CH3, notice that it fits. Okay, so always check, once you figure out you're splitting, then check and make sure that you fit the chemical shifts. Because sometimes there's like slight changes to the structure that will match the splitting, but won't match the shift. Okay. Identify the functional group of a compound that has a formula of C5H10O and a proton NMR signal at 9.5. All we want to know is the functional group. What do you think it is? You should know what all those functional groups are, right? <laughs> all right, we're all up there? Good. Okay, how do you know it's not a carboxylic acid? In case you weren't sure where that came. There's how many O's? One, so that's out. What about Nestor? How many oxygens does it have? Two. How about an amine? How many oxygens does it have? Zero, it has a nitrogen. Okay, so you got it down to those. Okay, how do you know it's not an alcohol? Alcohols are like one to five. They're more in the middle. Nine and a half is aldehyde. How do you know it's not a ketone? Ketones don't have a hydrogen on the curve, right? They have carbons on the curve. Okay. Okay. Each of the following compounds is characterized by a proton NMR spectrum that consists of only a single having the chemical shift indicated. Draw the structure for each. 
Okay, draw the structure, only a single peak. Okay, so what does that mean for the structure? What does it have to be? All the hydrogens have to be the, what? So how can you draw CA H18 and have all the hydrogens? Any ideas? Okay, Let, let's just draw a compound. Can you make a compound that fits C8H18? Hmm? What, what if I did this? Is that C8H18? Okay, because what can you tell me about all of those compounds, all of those hydrogens? Are they all equivalent? No. Okay, so you see why that fits a formula, but they're not all equivalent. So how can we make them equivalent? Okay, draw a ring. All right, so what if we did, are you talking eight carbons? Okay, did I draw eight carbons? Okay. Does that fit the formula, C8HAT? It's 16. Ah, okay. Remember what makes things equivalent. What makes things equivalent? Symmetry. Symmetry. Okay. So, what else could we do? I may have to erase them. I don't have enough room. Okay, so I'll erase these. You wrote them down, probably. Okay, so what else can we do? It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. What do you want to do? Besides go eat lunch. We have two minutes. We're going to do it. Do you have this slide? Oh, I must have come up with new slides last year and I don't remember. I didn't remember. Okay, so how can you make the hydrogens equivalent? So what do you want to do? Well, it isn't a ring and it isn't a straight chain. So what's left, people? What? Branches, right? Okay, so what are we going to do? How many carbons? One, two, three, four, five. Six carbons. Sorry. Okay. Wait. Where do you want me to put the last two? Start drawing structures. Remember when we did isomers? Do it on the, the second plus. This one? Yeah. What about it? You want a methyl? Okay, what does that do to, to these two methyls? It makes them the same. And then do the same thing. Okay, now how many kinds of hydrogens do you have? Okay, well, these are the same, all four, right? What about here? Two, three. Okay, we're, you're down to three. Okay, so how else can we put them together? Okay, what, what do you want me to do? Somebody's got an idea. Okay, all right, so what am I gonna draw now? Hang on. Oh, look at you, okay. <laughs> Okay, why does this change things? Because I'm going to make you do the other two. All right, so why does this change things? What do we do now? All of the hydrogens are equivalent. You see all the symmetry in there. Okay, so write down C2H3Cl3 and 2.7. And then write down C12H18 and 2.2. Okay, now I didn't talk about the shift. The shift is 0.9. So, like, is anything affecting it? Not really. And that fits with that structure, right? 
Okay, these some things affecting it, and you'll figure that out. All right, did you write that? Write that down. And then when we come in on Monday, we're going to do unknown on Monday. We'll start with these two. Oh my gosh.